Never let anybody see you sweat. So I was born in New York City and I lived there until I was eight years old. I realized that I was a much better talker than I was a listener. I don't know what to say, I just don't like what you're saying. Sorry, Your Honor. I ended up going to law school at Georgetown and I was a prosecutor for Janet Reno. I loved it because it was so raw. Were you cheating on her? Yeah, sure. Okay. All rise. Our show will be a mixture of education. I think you're misreading the law a little bit. And entertainment. <laughs> my main goal is justice and the law. That's been my legacy and the legacy I hope to continue into the future with the show. Max Bratton blames his former co-worker, Ozem, for a loan that was never paid back. Ryan Tamlin says he was working off the loan, but was sent packing before the deadline. Mr. Tamlin is countersuing for $900. Mr. Bratton, you are suing Mr. Tamlin for $500 that you say he owes you in repayment of a loan you are counterclaiming against him for $900 that you say he owes you. I'm gonna start with you, tell me what happened. Uh, he's a former coworker of mine, we worked together for about two years, and um, we actually got to know each other pretty well. I mentored him, um, and then uh, there were some layoffs at the company that we worked for, and about a month after that, um, you know, I, I just wanted to check in on him, make sure he was okay, and uh, turned out, uh, based on our conversation, he was having a really tough time, and um, he ended up asking me for a loan of $500. Oui, okay. Yeah. And you know, in the two years that I got to know him, he never really asked for a loan like that before. It kind of felt like he, you know, he really needed it. So, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted, really wanted to help him out. I, I liked him. Um, he's very talented. So you loaned him the $500, and yes. the understanding was that he would pay you back when? You know, I didn't give him an exact date. Um, I just said as soon as possible. Uh, I knew that he was, that he'd been working some odd jobs, and. Um, that he was, it sounded like he was working really hard at getting another job. So I just assumed it would be f um, within a reasonable amount of time. But neither, but your opinion of what's a reasonable amount of time and his may be different. That's a problem yeah. with a reasonable amount of time. Um, yes. But that was the understanding. When he gets a job and he can pay you, he should pay you. All right, then what happens? I checked on him monthly, um, gave him a call, he was still looking. Um, called him again the following month and he was still looking, um, no, no prospects, nothing. Um, and then after the third month, it, you know, it, it kind of became clear that he wasn't going to, f that he wasn't really looking for a new job. It, it just felt like he was stringing me along. Okay. And I was beginning to feel like I was being taken advantage of. So um, you so decided then? He started, he started crying over the phone, Judge. Um, so, uh, I decided to give him an opportunity to uh, work this money off. And work it off by doing what? By building a website from a new company. And what made you think he had that kind of talent? Oh, because we'd worked together before. So you've so seen I, websites he's built for other people? I've seen websites he's built for other people. Um, I knew that we'd worked in a corporate environment where deadlines mattered. So I gave him a certain amount of time to get this website done. How much time did you give him for the website to get done? Four months, Your Honor. And was the website done? No. No, All right, not. what was he able to get done in those four months? Um, uh, a, a, an unsatisfactory amount of work. It was, it was really, really uh, disappointing. All right, you, um, he calls you to see how you're doing and you hit him up for money. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 he called me and after a month, you know, like he, he called me after a month, I, I, got, I got laid off from the company. He calls me just to, just to check up on me, you know, because mm -hmm. we, 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 we had a rapport and everything. So he called to check up on me. I tell him, hey, I, I'm, I'm, I got laid off. It's been, it's been rough, you know, trying to find jobs and Can everything. Can I have a few bucks? And, and, and I, right, I have, so, he, so you borrow $500 and when and how are you supposed to pay that money back? Well, we agreed that he, after once I got a job and I had s sufficient income to pay him back, I would. And you know, well, and, you, and I was very let thankful. Let me ask you a question: What were you doing? What kind of job were you looking for? We worked at a marketing firm, so I was working like, and, and I and I do I know how to do website design, so I was looking to do something like that, like you know, like a marketing. All right, web, but in the meantime, throughout all those months that you owed him the money, did you take a job at McDonald's or somewhere else just to? Survive. What did I, you do? I was doing odd jobs. I was doing odd jobs. Like so, I, you just didn't have. Uh, did, but did you? So did you make like a payment just so that he would know that you weren't 
uh, forgetting him? Like, did you say to him, can I give you a little here, a little there? Did you do anything to try to repay the loan? I didn't do anything to, to repay the loan, but we, we had an agreement that I would pay him back once I, once I was employed, and I was working on getting gainfully employed so I could pay him back. So in any event, at some point, the deal entirely changes. You are going to uh, do a website for him. Yes. Does it take four months for you to do a website? That was the time that, that he agreed, that we agreed on to make. But then after three months, like, so he checked in with, with me monthly, right? Like, I didn't have anything. What exactly? Okay, besides saying you're working on it, what have you done in two months? That's what I want to know. Coming up on Justice for the People. I gave him more than enough time to not only find no, you work, didn't. but you to didn't give him it. the time well, I you found agreed on. Else. I, I didn't write the time. contract. You did. Yeah, I I'm... didn't dream the contract. You did. And later. And then in the middle of cooking, we hear a crash. Damien, um, your son, said, I'm so sorry the snow globe fell over. Come in. So it was an see. accident. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. This is Justice for the People with Judge Millian. We're back with the case of Max Bratton, who brought Ryan Tamlin to court over a tangled web of financial woes. The first month I was brainstorming and working on the aesthetics, and the, the second month I was putting in the code, making sure if you click somewhere it, it works. But after two months, like it's not, it's not feasible to show someone that because it's just a bunch of code and lines. So you tell him you don't want to, excuse me, you tell him you don't want to show it to him yet and then month three happens and what happens? M month three happens and I have the, the meat of the website is done. Everything is, the, but but the only thing is that aesthetically is not complete because we agreed on four months, but then after the third, but then after, and so I showed him the website after that, after three months and everything and I thought everything was good. Wait, but then, were you done when you showed it to him after three months? No, I was not finished. No, okay, so when you, when you say you thought everything was good you mean what did you mean I, I mean we, we talked I showed him the website I showed him that everything was functioning and everything but it, but it wasn't the four months yet so the, the last month is to make everything pretty and it's and, and marketable you know so people will come and use the website okay but, but the very so we talked and I showed him the website and I thought everything was good because he was like because like it, it, was, it wasn't the four months yet right and so but then the very next day he reaches out and says oh I'm actually going to be making I'm, I'm going to be going with someone else and to have have them to work on the website. So, and, but he didn't. So he doesn't end up using any of the stuff you did. No. But you feel it is unfair to have you working all that time and then not give you any credit for the work that you did. Yes. Because and you I, feel he a, pulled the rug out from under you before it was time. Yes. He didn't and give I have you a the log, full four I, I have a log of of all the things that I that I did in those three months and the hours that I worked. Let me see that. Just the law. Why did you pull uh, the rug out from under him before the farm? Like, you were so patient at all the other times. I'm wondering yeah. why you didn't just wait until the four months were over. I mean, and then say, I'm, I haven't asked sorry. my question yet. Yeah. And then say, once he gives you the finished product, that's acceptable, that's not acceptable. Uh, you know what? I don't want your product. Give me the $500. You know, whatever it is is coming to your head. But why don't you at least give him that other month for him to go ahead and, and, and finish it? I'm growing my own business, Your Honor. This is uh, uh, something that I've been very passionate about for a long, a long time. The That four-month period, yes, I said four months, but I know what he can do. So I fully expected him to be done with this well before the four month period. So that's why when he showed me what but he had, then why after did you give him months, four months? I, I you, well, you I, muddied I the waters because if your contract is he has four months to give you a, fi a finished product, in three quarters of the way through you pulled the plug. So what am I supposed to do? Say, oh no, now you got You worked for three months, but now you got to pay the five hundred bucks. I mean, what was your theory behind pulling the plug one month in advance of the time that you had given him? I was giving him extra time because I know he's also out there looking well, for. Well, then, other but work. you're not. I know. Then what made you change your mind and not give him the extra time? Because he gave me this, Your Honor. Uh, if I may, please show me. Yeah, you this may, but if it's not the, done, it's not done. This is, this I mean, the, you know, I mean, it, but, if you but wait Honor, until the four months are over and then what he gives you is unacceptable, that's one thing. What does this page represent? Explain things to me. It's it's his it's 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 the main layout of the thing, but it's not it's it, it, it's not pretty. But everything is. Functional. No, it's not a matter of pretty. Where, where do you click on things? Uh, on, on the top row, on the top row, you see uh, all those like every every. It, it's 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 still kind of bare because I didn't put I wasn't able I didn't have enough time to put the aesthetics into it. But everything functionally works. If you click something, it brings you to another page. All right. Everything so how much correctly. more work did you have? I just it was just the, the last month was all to make was all working on cosmetics. After what he showed me, I wouldn't I. 
drop this clown because I gave you more than enough time to not only find work, but to No, you work, didn't. You didn't give him the time well, I you found agreed somebody on. Else. I, I didn't, didn't write find, the I, contract. You did. Yeah, I, I didn't I, dream the contract. You did. I didn't enter look, the contract verbally with him. You did. So you decide that you're going to give him four months, and then you change the parameters, but you want me to say his work is worthless. You can't pull the plug beforehand because then it's you who's breaching, you see? I mean, listen, so, you're a businessman. You didn't like what you saw. You didn't have a lot of time left. You want you, you can make all the decisions you want. Absolutely. You're large and in charge. But here's a deal. You're coming to court then and saying, and you got to pay me 500 bucks. If you were just at home and saying, forget it. I'm pulling the plug. I'm cutting my losses. OK, but that's not what you're doing. You're coming to court and saying, you breached the contract because I don't like what you've done so far. That's not well, how it works. So I'm going to order you to pay back a portion of the loan since you didn't end up having to do the rest of the work. $125 for him. The $900 is just you making that up. You, the only thing that was ever supposed to happen was the $500 were supposed to be forgiven. So tell me the math on your $900. The $900 is, I, I did a $30 an hour for all the work that yeah, I did, who, right? What contract is that? This is the first time I've heard that contract. Did he ever enter into that contract? The $30 is just like a base, a base Th amount of pay that, for, for that the work that I've done. That you weren't being offered for this job, were you? That may be, first of all, if you were getting $30 an hour, where you been for four months when you owed him the 500 bucks? So this $30 an hour is completely made up in your mind right now in front of me for this case. But I cannot enforce a, enforce a contract you didn't enter into. You can't just decide the contract you wish you'd done. Oh, I wish I'd charge him $30. And I, wh where are you coming from? On your counterclaim against him, zero. On his claim against you, a portion of the money, $125. That's what's fair. All rise. Judge Millian has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant owes $125. I mean, it's not $500, you know. That's, that's fine with me, I guess. You got lucky. You owe me so much money. $125. Merry Christmas. Coming up. My son Damien, which she doesn't like. Why doesn't she like Damien? Damien is not John's, her He's brother. your child from another, another man. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so what? This is Justice for the People with Judge Millian. Rachel Tompkins claims her former sister-in-law's child smashed a treasured snow globe. Jessica Sullivan says the plaintiff is to blame for the accident because she didn't stop the kids from roughhousing. Ms. Tompkins, you are suing Ms. Sullivan, your former sister-in-law? Yes. Okay for $595.36 because according to you, a snow globe her child broke was her responsibility to replace. Tell me what happened. Yeah, so I have these weekly family dinners um, and my ex-sister-in-law and my brother got divorced a couple years ago. Um, about six months after the divorce, I, I reached out because my kids and her kids are, are still friends and I want to keep How the How many kids do you have? I have three kids and she has two. Okay. So, so my are son and her- similar ages? Yeah, my son and her son are the same age. My daughter, her daughter are the same age. Okay. A few months after the divorce, reached out to see if she'd be willing to come back to those dinners um, and she agreed. And so we started doing that for the first few weeks. It was great. It was fun to be all back together again. And then around the same time that my brother started um, being serious with a new partner, um, Jessica kind of started just dropping her kids off for the dinner, but not staying herself. Okay, um, but hold on. Right. Yeah. T uh, tell me about this snow globe. $595.36 for a snow globe? I, I, I mean, I, I never. I, uh, yeah, I never <laughs> either. Um, my, my godmother gave it to my husband and I as a wedding present um, okay. for our five-year wedding anniversary. How big was it, or how intricate was it? Um, or it what was, was a, it? a standard size snow globe, but it had this like gold plating and... Um, Interesting. Like, yeah, it was nothing like I had ever seen before, but it became a really... No, I like um, to see how the other half lived. Coming up. Did you feel uncomfortable when you were there? Yeah, very what, much did, so. Is there anything she did that made you feel uncomfortable, or you just, the whole thing just got uncomfortable for you? The whole thing got uncomfortable for okay. me. This is Justice for the People with Judge Millian. We're back with the case of Rachel Tompkins, who blames Jessica Sullivan for a shattered snow globe. 
where was the snow globe? So it was sitting on a coffee table, end table situation um, on the back side of a couch. Did you stop her from leaving and say, no, I'm not watching your kids? I asked if she would be staying for dinner this time, and she said no. She had a really urgent errand to run. Okay, Again, so you agreed to watch the children while she I went did, in the yard. I did. All right, yeah, and the then kids what happened? run inside. They were playing kind of rough. I sounding um, like the, the boys were wrestling, the girls were kind of cheering them on. And then in the middle of cooking, we hear a crash. Damien, um, your son, said, I'm so sorry, the snow globe fell over. Come in. So it was an see. accident. It was an accident. According um, to all the children, it was an accident. My son, Jeremy, and your son, Damien, were the ones who were wrestling. Jeremy, I could hear yelling, you know, kind of like, okay, like this is. You know, you're playing too rough, like, let's... Well, you don't think he picked up your snow globe and trashed it on Absolutely purpose. Absolutely not. But so it was, was because of the boys were wrestling, which apparently you knew and let go on. When did you tell her you wanted her to pay for the snow globe? When he, she came to pick up Damien. And what did she say? No. When did you first find out that this tragedy with the snow globe had happened? She basically texted me saying that my son Damien, which she doesn't like... Why doesn't she like Damien? Damien is not John's... Her He's brother. your child from another another man. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so what? what? What does that have to? I mean, so we're all from somebody. Why does that mean she doesn't like Damien? She's that's inviting him. But she's inviting it, him over every Sunday. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to. Where do you get the idea that she doesn't like Damien? Last Christmas, for instance, she gave him a two-year-old Lego set. Right. So I. Before the divorce, how was your relationship with your sister-in-law? Oh, before the divorce is great. I mean, like... And was the divorce um, somebody's fault or nobody's fault? It was divorce because John was seeing someone else. Okay. Is so. it the person he's with now? Yes. Did you feel uncomfortable when you were there? Yeah, very what, much did, so. Is there anything she did that made you feel uncomfortable or you just, the whole thing just got uncomfortable for you? The whole thing got uncomfortable for okay. me. Judge Millian's verdict when justice for the people returns. This is Justice for the People with Judge Millian. Why, um, Rachel, would you think that Jessica should be responsible for paying for the expensive snow globe? Because it's her kid? I believe if she had been there, like the original setup was supposed to be, I don't think this would have happened. Okay, but then had... that may be true. But then where do I put the fact that you let her not be there? The situation I have is that you and your husband are 100% supposed to be watching the kids. You can hear them wrestling, so that's lovely. But then these are the consequences of it. And she didn't inappropriately supervise her child you inappropriately supervise the child if he was able to break something valuable because you let the roughhousing go on in your house even though you were hearing it and you didn't put a stop. The girls are cheering them on and they're rough. Okay, it's fine with you. It's fine with me too. It's fine with her too. You know, it's not fine with the snow globe. Mm -hmm. But that's something that is 100% entirely within your control. In this situation, there is no parental liability on her part. You were in charge of the children, and therefore, you would be the one who's supposed to be supervising them. Judge Millian has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim is denied. I think it's great. I think I don't owe you anything, Rachel. I'm disappointed that this is the way that it turned out, but most importantly is our kids' relationship, so I hope that you can find a way to make that work. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.